Students, welcome back to my part three of acid bases and salts, class ten and CRT science book. And today we are going to discuss about pH. Now, what is this pH, and what is the purpose of this pH? So, this particular pH, this P stands for potency, potency or potentiality, potentiality of hydrogen. Ion concentration in a given solution. It, this particular piece stands for potency or potentiality of hydrogen ion concentration in a given solution. That means the PS refers to the potentiality of hydrogen ion concentration in a given solution. Now, what is the use of this pH? So why do you apply this pH in chemistry? This particular pH we will discuss in terms of pH scale. Okay, this particular scale has a numerical value which starts from 0 and ends in 14. Okay, this particular pH scale helps us to determine whether a given solution is acidic or basic. Number two. If the value range is below, range is below 7, then we confirm that the given solution is acidic. And if the value ranges above 7, then we confirm the given solution to be basic. Whereas 7 is neutral. These are the basic things you need to remember. In case of pH. Now we are going to further discuss about the pH scale. Now before that how we will define the pH in chemistry in terms of chemistry. So in terms of chemistry the pH can be defined as the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration of a given solution expressed in moles per liter. Expressed in moles per liter. This particular hydrogen ion concentration is expressed as H plus. A square bracket represents the concentration of hydrogen ion in a given solution. In a given solution. Therefore, pH equals to minus log of H plus that means hydrogen ion concentration. So you will get elaborately in your higher classes when you start with class 11. And for timing, just remember the formula. Okay. Next, this pH scale it ranges from 0 to 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13, 14. Okay. This particular value 7, whenever a solution you are able to identify the particular solution to be 7 that means by using those indicators okay you get litmus papers the litmus paper you have indications of different colors that color will signify or will help to determine whether the given solution is acidic or basic so whenever the value is 7 then that particular solution is said to be neutral generally distilled water pure water is said to be neutral next and below 7 if the value range is below 7 that is from 6 to 0 then that particular solution is known to be acidic so here it is known as acidic and if the value ranges from 7 above 7 that is from 7.5 to 14 then we say the given solution to be basic. Now how can you determine whether the particular uh, substance is highly acidic or strong acid or weak acid or a strong base or a weak base. If the rate value ranges from 0 to say 0 to almost 3.5, okay, 3.5, then that particular solution is said to be highly or strong acid. Better give strong acid. If the value ranges from 3.5 to say around 7.5, then it is known as weak acid. 
Same the case of base. If the value ranges from say 7.6 to 10.5, 7.6 to 10.5, then it is known as a weak base. And the remaining that is from 10.5 and above till 14, we confirm that particular solution to be strong base. So this is all about pH scale and how we can use this pH scale to determine a given solution is acidic, basic or neutral, whether the given solution is a weak acid or a strong acid or a weak base or a strong base and this can be identified with the help of pH scale. So we can define also pH scale as a uh, measuring instrument which is used to find the pH of a solution. It is a scale which is used in chemistry to determine the pH of a given solution. Nowadays, you have pH meter and in general labs, we have pH papers. That means we have indicators in the form of litmus papers. In the litmus paper, these are like strips, paper strips where values will be given to different colors, say when starting from 0 to 1 to say 14 and in different colors and when you dip this particular paper in a solution, given sample solution then in the particular indications, suppose the color changes to pink or blue or red, whatever the colors are there the different colors has different num numerical values and that particular numerical value and from that numerical value you can identify that particular solution to be a weak base, strong base uh, so weak base or a strong base the next, importance of pH importance of pH number one our human body has an optimal range of pH that means our metabolic activities perform better at a given optimal range of pH and that particular pH range is from 7 to 7.8 those from this particular pH range that means from 7 to 7.8 our body activities perform better so if the pH range it gets lower than this given range or it becomes higher than this given range it may be fatal to your body and thereby the metabolic activities will not be able to work properly and you may die number two our mouth also has an optimal pH range and it is said to be around 5.5 5.5 and if the value decreases below 5.5 in our mouth tooth decay tooth decaying develops tooth decaying develops number three antacids number three we are going to learn about antacids now what are these antacids they are nothing but they are a given a given um, type of base one which we take already which we take already antacids are nothing but they are a my base they are antacids antacids are my base antacids are my base which when taken orally reduces the excess acidity in our stomach and thereby reduces the pain which was developed due to acidity in our stomach. Generally antacids are used as magnesium hydroxide known as milk of magnesium baking powder sodium hydrogen carbonate they are also used as mild base so that means whenever you have acidity you take this particular magnesium hydroxide or sodium hydrogen carbonate and these particular substances when reacts with the acid that is produced in the stomach results in a neutralizing reaction and it reduces the pain of our stomach so we have already learned about the neutralization reaction when an acid and a base reacts, it results in the composition of salt and water. So that particular neutralization reaction takes place and thereby reduces the excess acidity in our stomachs and also helps to reduce the pain that was developed due to acidity in our stomach. 
So this is number four. Natal sting or bee sting. Natal sting or bee sting. So what is this natal sting or bee sting? Natal is a kind of leaf which is found a garden. And if you're not familiar with that leaf, so I'm showing in this video that particular leaf is known as natal leaf. Next B, B you have seen. The B depends on the type of species. So these particular stings are fine hair-like structures which can be spun onto our body. Spun. When they are spun onto our body, they are into our body, they release methanoic acid. And due to the release of this methanoic acid, we experience a severe or mild pain, which will be followed by irritation. To overcome this irritation, to overcome this irritation or this severe mild pain, we apply base to the stung region. So the, when we apply this base to the stung region, in that particular region, methanoic acid is being released as acid. So acid and base will be followed by an inflammation reaction and thereby it results in the formation of salt and water and which will reduce our pain and thereby we get rid of the pain. That's all about the uses of pH in our day-to-day -day life. Now we are going to discuss about NaCl, common salt. This NaCl can be utilized industrially for the production of different types of chemical compounds and we are going to discuss about those chemical compounds which can be produced industrially and which are very, very useful in our day-to-day -day life. And the first process is known as the chloralkali process. Chloralkali process. So for this chloralkali process, we need a setup as depicted on the blackboard. So you can see there is an anode and a cathode and this particular beaker is filled with brine. Brine is nothing but the aqua solution of salt, that means salt mixed with water. Next it has three outlets, one near the anode and one for the cathode and other just near the cathode. So when electricity is passed through this solution, salt water decomposes to sodium hydroxide. That means the result of the formation of sodium hydroxide which is a base. And in the cathode, it will release hydrogen gas, whereas from the anode, it will release chlorine gas. So this particular process is known as chloroalkali process. Now the question is that why this process is known as chloroalkali process? It is because when electricity is passed through the salt solution that is brined, it decomposes and results in the formation of chlorine and alkali for the sodium hydroxide. So NaCl plus water decomposes to and a sodium hydroxide plus chlorine gas plus H2 hydrogen gas. So you balance it. Yeah, two is balanced. So this particular process is known as chloroalkali process. So in chloroalkali process, our products were chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. So we are going to learn some uses of this chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. This chlorine is used in disinfectant and also it is used for the production of dressing powder. Next, this hydrogen gas can be used for production of fertilizers such as ammonia and ammonium, and it is also used as rocket fuels. Next, sodium hydroxide is also used in the preparation of soap, detergents, and also it is used in the paper industries for washing of the papers. Next, we are going to learn about bleaching powder. So when chlorine gas is passed over dry slate line, in the first chapter in the chemical equations, chemical reactions, we have learned that when calcium oxide is allowed to react with water, what is calcium oxide? Quick line, what we get in the market? Quick line. When calcium oxide is allowed to react with water, it results in the formation of calcium hydroxide known as slate line slate line 
So when this slate lime is allowed to dry, we get dry slate lime. We get dry slate lime. That is CaOH2. CaOH2. So when chlorine gas is passed over powdered dry slate lime, it results in the formation of it results in the formation of bleaching powder that is calcium oxychloride. It results in the formation of bleaching powder that is known as calcium oxychloride along with the formation of water. So this is called bleaching powder. Bleaching powder. Next we are going to learn about the preparation of baking powder. Its name is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Its chemical name is known as sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now how this sodium hydrogen carbonate is prepared in the state? So when common salt NaCl sodium chloride is allowed to react with water plus carbon dioxide plus ammonia it results in the formation of ammonium chloride along with the formation of sodium hydrogen carbonate and this is known as baking powder now when we add baking powder in our food items you can see that particular item is increased in size it becomes bulgy it becomes spongy in structure and why it happens so this is due to this particular reaction because when sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated is heated it releases it releases it results in the formation of sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus water and due to the formation of this carbon dioxide that particular food items the size increases or it becomes cripsy or it becomes spongy in nature so this is all about baking powder next uses what are the uses of baking powder it is used as an soda acid fire steam users number two this particular sodium hydrogen carbonate NaCO3 is used as a mild antacid on the discuss about antacids and that's all about baking powder passing soda sodium carbonate dot tan is to its chemical formula it is also known as sodium bicarbonate now how this washing soda is prepared so when sodium carbonate is allowed to react with tan water molecule it results in the formation of sodium carbonate dot tan H2O and this is known as washing soda now what is this tan H2O it is known as the water of crystallization unit water of crystallization unit in the next topic we are going to learn about water of crystallization topic so for time I am skipping this so we are going to the uses of washing soda you know that it is used for removal of permanent hardness in water, removal of permanent hardness in water. Number two, it is used in chemical industries, it is used in chemical industries. For production of different chemical compounds and few are given in a book you just go through it about the uses and that's all about was washing soda and next we are going to learn about the water of crystallization unit next water of crystallization water of crystallization it is the number of fixed water molecule fixed water molecule present in one formula unit of a compound one formula unit of a compound or a molecule whatever it is a fixed water molecule so before going to the fixed water molecules we need to learn something about the hydrated state 
an anhydrated state. Hydrate means it consists of water molecule, and anhydrate means it has no water molecule. So some substances when kept in the environment, when the raw is kept in open source, then it holds some water, it holds some moisture and that particular substance are said to be hydrated and whereas some substances can be prepared chemically or in industrial through industrial processes where the water can be removed but it has a tendency to hold that water that means hold that moisture and that particular substance are always anhydrated now when do you see these all type of substances so whenever you buy some electronic gadgets like laptops and mobiles whatever it is you can see tiny bags, bags are inserted in the bags and those bags contain some silica beads and those are known as anhydrated that means if some moisture get inside your that electrical gadget this particle anhydrated state will absorb those moisture thereby it safeguards the electrical gadgets or else if those are not put on those packets they may damage the motherboard and thereby your electrical gadgets will not work so that is called water crystallization unit the fixed water molecule present in one from the unit of the compound so as you have seen in the washing soda in sodium carbonate and it to CO3, sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. If 10 water, it, it has the capacity to hold only 10 water molecules. That means one from the unit of this particular molecule compound can hold only 10 water molecules, and that is known as the water crystallization. We are going to learn about cluster of Paris, which is one of the most important topic, and it is the last topic of this chapter: acid bases and salts. So before going to cluster of Paris, we need to learn about gypsum. Zip. Zip sum. It is calcium sulfate dihydrate. That means in water crystallization unit is two H two or two water molecules. Dihydrate calcium sulfate dihydrate. Now this is this gypsum. It is a soft sulfate mineral. It is a soft sulfate mineral, and it is being used for different purposes for plaster for fractured bones and it's also used as a primary the main component for the production of the blackboard chalk you've seen the blackboard chalk that is being used in a school so these particular materials are being produced or prepared through this compound that is known as gypsum and its chemical name is calcium sulfate dihydrate next what is this plaster of paris when the gypsum when the gypsum is heated at 373 kelvin when the gypsum is heated at 373 Kelvin, it decomposes, that means it loses water molecule. It loses one and a half water molecule. It loses water molecule and results in the formation of calcium sulfate dot half is to known as hemihydrate. Its name is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. And this particular substance is known as plaster of Paris. Remember one thing, when heated at 373 Kelvin only, it loses this water molecule and it gets converted into plaster of Paris that is known as calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Now the question is that this particular calcium sulfate hemihydrate, when allowed to react with water, again reverts back and forms gypsum. It forms gypsum. But if this gypsum is heated above 373 Kelvin, if it is heated above 373 Kelvin, then it results in the formation of dead burnt gypsum. Dead burnt, burnt gypsum. And which is N high plus. N high plus. That means no water is present. There is no water crystallization. And this is known as dead burnt gypsum. This is beyond your topic or syllabus. But still keep in mind that when it is heated above 373 Kelvin, then it is converted to dead bond gypsum and it is anhydrous. Next. So this calcium sulfate hemihydrate, calcium sulfate hemihydrate, when allowed to react with one and a half water molecule it results in the formation of calcium sulfate dihydrate and this is nothing but gypsum 
zip sum. So and it is hard, it is hard, then rigid. So this particular plaster paste is used for plastering fractured bones. It is used for making decorative items. It is also used for making or preparing toys and such essentials. So these are the uses and is given in the so at last I would conclude with a question. So why this aqueous solution of acid and base can conduct electricity? It is because this acids when dissolved in water or when they are diluted, an acid or a base when being diluted in water, this particular water, this particular acid or base dissociates into hydrogen ion or the results in the formation of hydrogen ion along with the formation of hydrogen ion, whereas in case of bases, it results in the formation of hydroxide ion and due to the presence of ions, that particular solution can conduct electricity. And that's all. Have a nice day. Thank you.